Warcraft Total War version 2.2 released during the summer of 2022. Alright, so traits do not work in this version because of a mistake by me. It will work again in the next release. But we are gonna start a new campaign. We'll disable use passwords. I'm using the hot seat and reign of chaos campaign. So you go into multiplayer hot seat and then I pick either the frozen throne campaign or the reign of chaos campaign. We will play the reign of chaos campaign here. No battle time limit. Manage all settlement, yes. It will not throw CPU moves. Okay, battle difficulty should be medium so the enemy won't get any bonuses. Difficulty medium now we can have that on on very hard difficulty. Alright, and we will play as the night elves actually, but we'll check the other factions first. So in, in the frozen throne campaign we have the Kingdom of Lordaeron, here known as the Alliance of Lordaeron. <coughs> Strength strong all around, weaknesses lax, the multi hit point units of, of uh, some other factions and their best cavalry units is like the Knights of Tyr, elite unit, They're led by King Tyranas, Manatil, father of Artus, Manatil, future Lich King, the Scourge, then the, the King of Stormwind, and they Strengths strong all around, weaknesses lacks the multi hit point units of some of the other factions. Their best cavalry unit is the Stormwind Cavaliers. Alright, they are led by Varian Rin, I believe. Could be wrong. We are not gonna place them. We have Teramor, led by Archmage Jaina Pradmore. Strong all around, strength. Weaknesses, lacks the multi-hit point units of some other factions. Mounted Archmag is their best unit. Mounted Mages, the only weakness is that they do not have unlimited missiles because they were way too overpowered, so I limited their missiles. They are really good. Okay, and then we have Casmodan Dwarves, led by King Magni of Casmodan. The best unit is the Bolon Beard Elders. So I believe they have a better unit, the Siege uh, Breaker. Siege breakers, but this is one of their best units. Okay, strengths, the best infantry unit for sure. Strengths, strong defensive infantry, gunpowder units, and the most powerful artillery in the known world. So they have good defensive infantry, gunpowder units, and best artillery. So their artillery is still the best, just like with uh, Lord of the Rings and Warhammer, where the dwarves also have the best artillery. That's true here as well in Warcraft. Uh, gunpowder, however, is their main specialty in this game, rather than infantry. Uh, weaknesses, decent cavalry, so they do not have uh, very good cavalry. Okay. Then we have the High Elves, the Kingdom of Quel'Thalas, led by King Anasterian Sunstrider. The best unit is the Grand Magister's Mages, which is also their bodyguard. And they have strengths, solid infantry, good cavalry, and powerful mages. And unlike other factions, their infantry and and uh, cavalry is actually really good. Uh, their infantry, even the basic infantry, is really good stat-wise. Weaknesses: few starting areas. Yeah. Then with the Dark Iron Dwarves, led by Emperor. Yeah, whatever. Tain Tarisian is their leader. Dark Iron Golems is one of the best units. Strengths feels a powerful mix of solid infantry and warlocks. Yeah. And they have a lot of gunners too. Monsters. Light or light. Uh, then we have the Dark Horde, led by Ren Blackhand. Their best unit is the Red Dragons. Uh, their strengths heavy ogre infantry and the Breezing Dragons, weaknesses, limited heavy cavalry and good missile troops. Yeah, they have limited cavalry and missile troops. Uh, Kingdom of Asul Nerub, they are like cavalry faction, made up of horse archers mostly. Strengths, exotic but effective mix of light cavalry and light infantry units. Weaknesses, lacking heavy units. Under Kings is their best unit. I believe their bodyguard too. No, maybe not their bodyguard, but it's one of their best units for sure. Then we have the Undead Scourge. No, this is the Night Elves led by Archdruid Malfurion. Their best units, the Mo Moon Priestesses, or one of them at least. Strengths, excellent mix of missile, cavalry, and light lead troops. 
weaknesses, lacks heavy melee infantry. Alright, and then we have Undead Scourge, a very similar symbol. <coughs> Strength has a great mix of elite units and numbers, weaknesses, limited missile troops, and the best units is Frost Worms, Undead Dragons. Then we have the Drakari Trolls, the Ice Trolls of Northrend. Strengths, versatile mix of medium units and powerful disciple units. Weaknesses, lack in casters. Yeah, they only have one caster, I believe. When, when other factions have like three or more. Okay, Drakari Temple Guards is their best unit. One of their best units. Certainly their best infantry unit. Alright, and they have a, they are the strongest troll faction by far. <clears throat> okay, the Kingdom of Stromgard, one of the human factions. They have the best infantry and cavalry out of the, at least best infantry out of the human factions. They might not have the best cavalry. The Scarlet Crusade might have similarly good troops, but they, they and the Scarlet Crusade have the best cavalry too. Okay, strengths: the best troops and knights of any human faction. <clears throat> Fighting discipline, discipline ranks with field and sword. Yeah, they are like Rome of Warcraft today. They have focus on cavalry and infantry and not mages. Weakness is limited numbers as most people have left for other kingdoms such as Lordaeron and Stormwind. Yeah, Stormwind and Lordaeron and Terramore they have more mages and Terramore have a lot of like minor factions in their rosters like Kultura, Staloran, Gilneas and such and even other races like High Elves and Dwarves. Um, Stormwind also has dwarves and mages, but do not have high elves, and then and do not have the minor factions like Kiltras, Gilneas, etc. And uh, Lordaeron has also access to the minor factions and to the mages and to the most custom units like uh, dwarves and elves. So they have the most varied troops. But Stromgard has bigger focus on infantry and cavalry, and the Skull Crusade has a bigger focus on cavalry and uh, then I believe that uh, the difference between Lordaeron and Terramore is that Terramore has way more troops from different places in the beginning of the game and they have a weaker position, they only have started with one or two areas depending on the campaign you choose the Reign of Chaos campaign they have one area Terramore and in, in the Frozen Throne campaign they have Terramore and Northwatch and then they have also I believe uh, the Iyer of Kulturas. Okay, but, but they have uh, similar troops. They also have a few unique troops that Lordaeron doesn't have, of course. Okay, Stromgard has... Um, it's the faction you want to play if you like a Roman-styled human faction. Okay, the, <coughs> the Farrakid Trolls. They are the weakest troll faction, I believe. Strengths, vers versatile mix of weaker units and powerful infantry units. Weaknesses, limited heavy infantry. While Raptors is one of their best monster units, but I believe the Scorpions are even better. They were added later, after the picture was taken. We have the Horde, led by Chief, Chieftain Troll. Strength, superb heavy infantry and skirmish units. Weaknesses, limited heavy cavalry and good missile troops. Yeah, they have mostly light cavalry. Kudo Riders is one of their best units. In Outer Soul, they are really, really good. In, in real time, I believe other units might be better, like mages. They have a unit mounted mages, for example, for seers, uh, like uh, seers mounted on wolves, shooting magic fire. That's probably their best unit. Okay, and then we have the burning legion, the demons. One of their best units is the infernals. Incredibly powerful demons, skilled in magic and melee. Weaknesses, lacks light units, slow medium troops units that are costly to summon, yeah. And uh, they do have access to horde units, fell orc units, red orcs. So they're medium and basic troops. Okay. And we have the trade collision, the goblins. <coughs> has a strong mix of elite ranged and mechanized units. Weaknesses, few numbers, spread out. And... Uh, in need of Markner is Shredder is one of their best infantry units. It's probably their best infantry unit. Okay, and uh, we are playing another campaign as the 
Trade Collision and another campaign also has the Blood Elves and the Naga, they are not available in this campaign because the Blood Elves are the High Elves in this campaign and the Naga are not present they were removed and then uh, I believe that the Skull Crusade are, are not present in this campaign and the Forsaken are not present either but the Forsaken can, can uh, spawn if certain events happen the, and the Blood Elves can also spawn the Skull Crusade and the, the Naga are not available in this campaign then we have the Gurbash Trolls, the Jungle Trolls, the best units, the Blood Slayers. They are the Berserkers of their faction, they can go Berserk. Strengths, versatile mix of weaker units and powerful infantry units, same as the Thrag Trolls. Weaknesses, limited infantry, heavy infantry. They are very similar to Thrag with different elites and, uh, and medium troops, but similar basic troops. And uh, <coughs> I would say they are slightly better. They have better elite troops, but the Frack have some really good ones too. So I would say they're very even. Okay, then we have some other factions. We have the Amani Trolls. The forest Trolls. They are mixed between smaller Trolls, like the Gerbash and the Frack. They are only smaller Trolls. And then we have the Amani Trolls. They are a mix. They have both, both bigger Trolls and smaller Trolls. Their basic units are smaller Trolls. Some of their medium troops are smaller trolls, and then some of their medium trolls are bigger trolls, and then their elite stuff are heavy, uh, bigger, tro bigger trolls. Strengths, versatile mix of light slash medium units and powerful elite units. Weaknesses, lacking in casters. So I would say that the Farak are the weakest, followed up by the Gurbashi, and the Amani are stronger than, than those two, because they have bigger trolls as well. Including cool Dragonhawk uh, Knights. Lacking casters is their weakness, but they still have at least two caster units. And they have Skullbreaker Elite Infantry, really good. They also have a mounted unit of those. So they, they are a pretty strong faction. Uh, we have the Ankirai Insects in Kalimdor down here. Swarm faction like Zerg in Starcraft. One of their best units is the Silitid B mods, these cavalry units. Strengths, Swarm Faction using a vast number of weaker Stiltid units plus the st uh, uh, stronger Karadja units. Yeah. They are a pretty strong faction with a smaller roster. And we have the Rikel, they have about the same number of uh, roster as the Asylum Group Spider Kingdom. The difference is that the Ankarai faction is mostly infantry and mages, while the Still Naru faction is mostly cavalry and infantry. Horse cavalry, horse archers, spiders that can shoot. <coughs> okay. So Ankirai, Navrikel, the giant Norsemen of Nortrend. One of their best units is the Proto Drake, giant Drake here. Strengths, superior he heavy infantry and fire breathing Proto Drakes. Weaknesses, lacks light infantry units. They have some female uh, vehicles that are smaller than their male counterparts, and they count as like medium infantry, but they do not really have light ones. They need to hire mercenaries for light troops like bandits and such. Okay, I hope we haven't selected more than one faction. We're gonna play as the Night Elves. Okay, the Night Elves. Yeah, I think the only one selected is the Night Elves, that's good. <coughs> to win we need to hold 50 regions and eliminate factions the Horde, Ankurai and the Naga in a long campaign. In a short campaign we need to hold 30 regions and eliminate factions Ankurai and the Naga. The Naga are no longer present in this campaign, which means the only faction we need to kill is the Ankurai down here. Prefer the long campaign, we need 50 regions and we need to kill the Horde, our main rival in Kalimdor in this campaign. And we need to kill the Ankirai and the Naga. I, I believe the Naga should be replaced with the Burning Legion in this campaign. I forgot them to do that. So we'll still fight the Burning Legion. They have a strong presence here and a presence in Kalimdor. Our goal will be to fight the rebels and conquer areas. And uh, all the Naga areas are rebel areas here. So we'll take all of them and any other rebel areas. And then we'll fight the Horde. And be allied to Terramore. And we will... Uh, Fight the Burning Legion, and then later the Ankarai faction. The Naga won't be uh, uh, present.
present in this campaign. So, so our goal is to defeat Burning Legion, our main enemy, and the Horde, our main rival, and the Ankarai faction, an ancient enemy of the Night Elves. Besides that, we might also need to defeat the Fract Trolls, another ancient enemy of the Night Elves. And uh, if I want to, we might go to Northrend and fight the Scourge, the Undead. But we'll see about that. In, in Eastern Kingdoms, we do not have anything we want to do. So we can possibly go to Northrend and, and such. But we are playing the early campaign, so I, I guess I would be happy with just conquering Kalimdor, defeating the Horde, defeating the Burning Legion, and defeating the Ankarai faction, and possibly the Trolls. So I think we will keep this campaign to the Kalimdor area. Alright, let's start. I'll pause the recording here so we don't have to watch the loading screen. See you soon. Alright, we're in the campaign. The campaign has started. The Night Elven capital is in order to the tree in this campaign. Also in the other campaign, but I destroyed all their buildings and other campaign because the tree is supposed to be destroyed in the frozen throne timeline. We have general scenarios here. Keeper of the Grow, his own model, looks pretty cool. Soldier model is the Night Elven Archer. This is a custom general in use by two generals, Scenarius and his brother. We also have Ko co-leader in the Malfurion Storm Rage, the faction leader, one of the leaders. He has his own model. Most suitable, I use in Eric. The root of the, the Talon, I believe. He's at the root of the Talon. Here I use the in Eric. Keeper of the Grow model. We also have Yared Shadow Song. He's also using this model. The only male one that I did. We have Maeve Shadow Song. Our custom model. This is a model of me. Also used by the uh, the unit, uh, the wardens, the night elven wardens. We have uh, Asia. This is the generic general model, but she is actually this type of unit in battle too. Has this panthers her mount, so it looks exactly the same. Custom general. This is one of the unique custom generals, but all the generals in the Night Elven faction will look like this. Okay, and then we have Tyrande Whisperwind, co leader Tyrande, the other leader of the Night Elves. She has her own tiger and model. Alright, Tyrande, the only one with that model on the map. We have uh, Rain Wolf Runner in this model on the map. I believe it's the old general, used only by this character in this version of the mod. We have Remulus, the brother of Scenarius. He's using this model too. Only two generals have that model. Then we have Roll Bear Mantle, the bear druid. He has a bear. A bear bear form. He is transformed into a bear. Only character with this model on the map. We have Foundal Staghelm, also using this model. He's a druid. all of them here and on that ire we have an area down here too we have Shandris Feather Moon it's in this model oh we have Strong this was the old general it's unique for this model now but she's also the assassin I believe this model is also the assassin for the night elves the old general this model on the other hand is the general from battles and used only by this yes, character on the map. Okay, Night Elves, capital cities, Nordra Seal, the tree. Faction leader is co leader Malfurion Stormrage. It is generally the same guy. Generals 11. 
Legions Control 10, <coughs> Cities 8, Castles 2, 3 Councils of Castle, I believe, Battle Swan 0, Battle Slots 0, Year is 20 after the Dark Portal, Turn number is 1, so we need to hold 50 Regions, eliminate factions to Horde, and Cry and the Naga. The Naga are no longer present on the map, so they are pretty much already defeated. Instead we will defeat the Burning Legion in their place, and maybe even the Farak trolls down here if they are still around. The first goal is to conquer rebels, previously held by the Naga and other rebel areas that are held by, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Fulborgs, Fulborgs, I believe. Might remember their name wrongly. Then we will fight the Horde, so they will invade us, and the Burning Legion. Here they will also invade this area. And uh, after we have fought them, we will reach the areas of the Kiraji down here. They will probably invade these areas and move all the way down here. And the Thrak over here. We also have the goblins a little bit here and there, but they are usually not that successful in the campaign. They have a really bad starting army in each area. And they will probably be defeated before they can get their best stuff. Okay, so the Night Elves they had tr started a campaign as the Night Elves in, in the Reign of Chaos campaign back in 2019 in February and they did two episodes, one with one in 55 minutes I believe and one in 47 minutes where I conquered a bunch of areas from the Naga ruins, two ruins here from the Naga and one ruin here then I fought a battle here against a large Naga army and that's where I ended we will take the same areas now, but from the rebels. They are held by rebel Naga units, and then we will march towards Eldaret. It's held by rebels. So we will try to take the same areas, but this time from the rebels. So we won't face as much opposition. We have also changed the starting garrison since I played it back then. So we can leave a unit of um, Night Elven spearmen in the city of Nighthaven. Here we have a unit. Ah, we have replaced the Naga with Murlocs, Warlords Ristis. Have Murlocs Warcrows. Ah, just a bunch of Murlocs, but they are, they are numerous. Leave a unit of spearmen there too. Here they also have a bunch of Murlocs. Murloc short trawlers. I will fight the Murlocs for sure. I could use more troops. Oh, here we have another rebel area. It's a Furbolg area. They also lack unit info cards. So there are a bunch of rebel units that lack unit info cards. Too. All the factional units have that now, thanks to A-Beam. Yes. Sulfurion did the humans, the night elves and the scourge. And A-Beam did the rest. He did most of the mercenaries and all the rest of the playable factions. But there are a few mercenaries or rebel units. I mean, few rebel units. Minor faction units st still without it. Okay, we will move our troops. Not even the cavalry can reach the army. We will just move them to Night Haven. We can recruit Furbolgs here. Which I think we will do here, actually. Furbolg Shamans, Mages, they are really good. And Maulers. We will recruit all of them. Especially the Mages are good. This army could probably handle the Furbolgs side of Timbermoor Hold. We will attack. And lay siege. Timbermoor hold. It's scenarios. They do not play it exactly like we did previously. How many troops do we have? We like eight troops. Seven troops will be sent there for sure. Seven night elven troops. We can leave Malfurion in the capital. Yard Shadow Song in Starfall. We have Everlook, an allied settlement. The Goblins Trade Coalition is there. We'll leave them be. As long as they don't attack us, we won't 
touch them. Can move uh, maybe Fredo Song to Starfall for now. And this, yeah, no wrong. We move over here. We have Rebels, Murlocs. Uh, I changed the settlement to a village too, so it wouldn't be too easy to get a large city. We'll take it. Maeve? No, with uh, Nature actually. A bunch of battles to fight against Murloc rebels. It will be easier than fighting the Naga that we had to do previously. We'll also start to move towards the rebel area over here. We have Orc rebels there. They want to attack. A lot of rebel areas to take. And uh, don't move these guys. Ah, the general can't be moved. They move the troops. We want this area too. Take all the rebel Naga areas. Pretty worthless areas. They are villages, ruins. Even this settlement that I thought were worth something has been changed into ruin to not make it too easy to get a great city for the night elves there. We'll check construction and recruitment. Whether to near upgrade the armor, we can go for that. No, we do not have a lot of money. I want economical buildings. Traveler's Lodge. No. I think we'll go for the dirt roads. It'll give us some improvement in the economy. We build dirt roads everywhere. Here we can go for a Elven Port. An Elven Port. And more dirt roads. In areas. We're out of money. We had some ayers too, but we do not have a fleet. We can't leave yet. We have Shandrit Feathermoon here with some troops. We have this area too. Donas is the future capital of the Night Elves. But it's not the capital in this version of the game. Okay. A village, a town. Yes. Can move out these troops. Move towards the furbolgs here. We want to take that area too. These troops can move out, of course. Maybe we'll move up the swordsmen and then we'll move. In this into the arm, it's much better. This unit 15 attack, 5 charge bonus, 16 defense, 1 hit point. A lot of goods uh, built it. Well, this one is just basic, but it's still pretty good for a basic unit. You can do 3 low, 12 attack, 16 defense. Still pretty good. Yeah, what about the spearman? Ah, it's about the same as the. The swordsmen. Swordsmen are better against infantry and the spearmen against cavalry, of course. Okay, we can't do anything more now. We'll have to end the turn. Yeah, we need to take all the rebel areas before anyone else does. Bright presented, we do not need to marry anyone. New mission. A great nation appears weak, tolerates such insolence from these rebels. We want us to take an area. Uh, ruins of Matistra, yeah, we are about to take it. Send more troops into the army here. <coughs> Including cavalry. Send extra yes. troops here. Yes, Lord. Closing for battle. 
help take this area as a castle. It's more worth it to take it than the villages. Scourge is the strongest faction militarily in the world. Burning Legion has the best financial situation and main rival in the campaign. The Alliance of Lord are an ally, has the best production and the largest population, and the Scourge is the overall strongest faction. They are an enemy, but they are not in Thalimdor. We do not need to worry about them. We have built a lot of dirt roads in various locations. We do not want this, these units to be led by an army. <coughs> I think we could attack. First thing we'll do is attack this area, I think. With this General Remulus, the Night Elves. We'll pause the game here and start. Uh, no, we won't do that. We'll save the game. Night Elves. Jesus Christ! Might crash. Okay. I don't know why that happened. I clicked on the V button or something. Night Elves. Zero, zero. Alright, we've saved. Balance of power. 2-1 in our favor. The enemy is a bunch of Murlocs. We have two units of Murloc Shore Crawlers. An attack for charge bonus for the defense. One hit point can swim. They can swim over rivers on the map. Combat bonus in woods or snow. Excellent morale. Good stamina. And Murloc Tidehunters can swim. Excellent morale. Combat bonus. They have better defense. They are pikemen, but they have worse attack. Okay, and then we have the Maluk slaves. They have even worse attack than the Maluk tide hunters, and they have real, really bad defense. Only two, while the tide hunters had six, and the sword clawers had four. Okay. <coughs> then we have the swamp runners. They have lean throwers. Nine missile attacks, pretty good. Effective against armor, they can penetrate armor. So they are actually pretty good, but 5 defense. Okay. And the Murlocs are also used to the militia of the Naga faction in the game. Let's start this battle. The Naga faction is only available in the 41. They used to be in both campaigns in the pub. So when I played this campaign in 2019, they, they were available. They were unstable. We didn't use the medieval tool to war any in order of project 2 and some other units could crash and such. Let's start deployment. Shut down that advisor. Here we have the general, Remulus. Keeper of the Grove general, he looks as good as the others. Really impressive. I don't remember how I managed to make he him look good when I couldn't make Risa look good. She's using the same general animation as. Uh, the Swordmaster stat where she's too tall, but this one is using his own model here. <coughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm not using a custom model for him. Or maybe I am. Well, maybe he is riding a horse. So his body is the actual general. That might be why he looks so good. We have uh, these units, they mean shield wall. They don't need that in this battle. We have the Night of the Warriors, so shield wall is good against ranged units. The enemy might have uh, Javeliners, but uh, for the most part they will probably not be needed. We have the mounted Night of the Warriors, they are decent cavalry. An attack, 8 charge, bonus 17, defense, excellent morale, powerful charge. The worst cavalry of the night elves, melee cavalry. We have the archers, of course. Night elven archers, the worst archer in, in their army. We have some armored archers too. They are still very good. 7 attack, <coughs> 8 missile, 9 defense, not very good defense. Still pretty good for a, a unit with this little armor, but they are very fast and nimble. Can hide anywhere. Combat bonus in woods, long range missiles, excellent morale. They are very long range missiles, they are really good archers and really good morale. They'll fight probably to the death. 
and all break very late and uh, when they have very few left and <coughs> combat bonus in woods they are better in woods of course and can hide anywhere just like a rogue okay we have a custom settlement here the Naga village we skinned uh, Storm Sora capital from her to the war okay I need to tab out I want to control the general in battle. See us in back. I can now control the general. Like this. Can walk. It's the keeper of the grow general. Let's start the battle. So this is the keeper of the grow general, Remulus. Really cool to control him in third person like this. He looked really good. For a weird general like this, he looked perfect. Spent a lot of time, like back in 2018, 2019, to get the, the the rider, the body, the human body to fit the the the, the horse body because the the lower body is a horse and the up the human body is a human rider. So it it started. I believe it spawned in the back of the the mount. So I had to move the body to the area here and then make it look good. It took a lot of tries and trials and errors. Of course it can separate and such because in medieval 2 you're not supposed to play with Kentaurs, so, so it's still a separate model. That's why the, the body is kind of separate from the horse, but when, uh, in, when it stands still it looks very good. And I spent a lot of time to make it look good. This is Remless. Of course, can run too. They can circle and shoot the building. These bodyguards, they can throw a missile attack. They are mages. They are similar to the Archmagi and the Farseers. They are mounted casters with a really dangerous projectile. It's a really unique, cool general. General's bodyguard. The bodyguard's unique for this guy. The unit exists as a mounted caster unit too. In the late game. Alright. Can zoom out. Okay, zoom in. Can take a look at the unit when they run. Of course looks less good when they run because of the separate human body looks a little bit weird can't be helped all the cantors in medieval 2 have this issue no way to fix it as the mounted body is the horse body is separate it's a separate model it's a horse and the other human upper body is a human rider yeah, doesn't look as good when they run. At least they work. Alright. My much better when they walked. Alright, it's time to take this area. The Murlocs here. Not the strongest enemies. Much easier than the Naga troops that used to be there in previous versions of the mod. So I think we'll send at first the archers. We want to attack their javelin throwing units first so they are the most dangerous ones best ones and yeah, we want to attack them our archers can attack the other units with our infantry
spend uh, Night Elven Warriors first before sending in the much better Shadow Land Guardians. We don't want to use the cavalry. The archers are fast too. This is normal speed. Always liked playing as the Night Elves in World of Three and in World of Three Frozen Throne. When, whenever I played with friends in multiplayer LAN, I used to play as the Night Elves. Also, I prefer the Night Elves out of the four playable factions the humans, the Horde, the Night Elves, and the Undead. The Undead are the Scourge, pretty much, and the humans are the Alliance of Lordaeron. <coughs> the Kingdom of Lordaeron. And. Uh, they have access to some blood elven troops too. Or high elven troops. Uh, okay, then the Naga and the Blood Elves were available to play as in the campaign, in the Frozen Throne campaign, but they were not available in custom battle. In the War of Three, you mostly play custom battle against friends or the AI. These are the Night Elven archers. They look great. They are very tall. The arms look a little bit weird because of the all models. I think uh, Bantu wanted the models of, the, of this mod to be accurate to their size, um, but uh, still used the ordinary uh, skeletons for the humans, so that's why they look a little bit weird and disproportionate with their arms. I would have preferred maybe if, if, if uh, we would have used the normal size for humans to make them look perfect, but then they would have looked uh, smaller than what they should look like. I mean, they are supposed to be taller than humans. But they look good enough. If they had been in normal human size, they would have not been glitched in the arm. It's because they are taller. Too tall for the animation, I believe. For the skeleton, I mean. It's a model. There are many different hairstyles, too. Green and like... Uh, Naga green, I don't know the word. And blue. Even even purple. Alright. Cape might have been unnecessary, but they look kinda cool with it, but it would have been better if the cape <coughs> if the cape had been removed. <coughs> I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. So yeah, the arms look a little bit weird. <coughs> Otherwise they look fine. Great model. It's a fan made night alone model. This one. Very high quality model. We found a World of Three fan site. <coughs> this settlement is pretty vast. Alright. But they didn't have any gold locks there, mages. Order and the Murlocs are led by Gorlock mages. Here they didn't have that, so it's good. I hope we won't run into infantry. It's the mean the minimap. Now we reached water. We had to run all around the area. We even had to be submerged under the water. Now they started to fire. Good. They just don't like the position from where they fire. They are not supposed to be able to breathe underwater. So it looks kinda bad. They can fire from here. Alright, can't swim in anymore. Where are the infantry? Here, uh, 25 in a unit. 
We have another infantry unit too. In front of them. We'll take a look on them instead. Stay there. Front runners. They will reach the enemy first. We can see the archers over there. I believe these guys are not as fast as the archers. Did we see some of the archers? These guys are moving a different route because they are moving to fight the Marlocks. I believe you can see the Marlocks over here. Battle will start now. Our basic Night Elven swordsmen. So the Night Elves, they are a matriarchal, matriarchal society. Their basic staff are men and their better staff are females. However, they are one of their leaders is a druid, and the druids are also men and women. So there are some good uh, male units too, but most of the good staff uh, are females. Actually. They are a female-led society with some men in high positions too. Okay. So most of their shit uh, units are men, like these guys. They want to spend first. They are still much better than the Murlocs might be able to win on their own. Use two units. They are aided by the Night Elven archers firing at the enemy from afar. Taking care of the javeliners. In this episode I want to conquer everything that I had conquered from the Naga in the first episode. Maybe even what I conquered in the second episode. So we combine these two into one episode. So a lot of battles against Murloc rebels here. They are numerous but weak in stats. It wouldn't be much of a problem to handle for the Night Elven basic units. They are almost as good as the High Elves. Some of the best units in the game. Murlocs, they are the militia of the Naga really bad. Well the swordsmen here they are not militia, they are actual basic troops of the night elves. They have a verse unit that is a militia unit. Called the Night Elven Volunteers I believe. They are also better than the Murlocs. But do not fight in a line like these guys. Elves, they were my favorite faction in World of 3 out of the normal four uh, factions, but I always prefer the Nag and the Blood Elves for some reason. So I like the, them even more. We have another campaign with uh, the Blood Elves and the Naga too. I'm playing a Trade Coalition Goblin campaign, a combined hot seat campaign as the Naga and the Blood Elves, and I'm playing this campaign as the Night Elves. And the Trade Coalition and the Night Elven campaigns, they are set in the Reign of Chaos early time period. And the Naga and Blood Elven campaigns are set in Frozen Throne. In the Frozen Throne later era. Okay. And those are the campaigns currently. I used to have a well, the last campaign too. I started the first campaign I ever did in this mod. The review of the mod campaign. The one that won the, won the voting in 2018. And I said I was gonna start the campaign as one of the factions to preview the mod. M uh, I will probably not restart it because I'm playing the Blood Elves and they are very similar. They have some different elite units, but otherwise they are the same, use different colors. They have different starting areas, I believe the High Elves have more areas at the start and such. Different threat models and such too. Where are the enemy? Let's just move there. Ah, those are the range units. We don't want them to fire at will, we want them to only fire at the javeliners. And the infantry will attack the Murloc slaves. Here we have the javelin throwers. Ignore them. 
You need to kill some of us. Archers will handle those guys. They have been in shield wall formation. They would have been better at protecting against those guys. But we want them to fight the melee infantry. Ah, the leaners are in the way. Maybe they should be in shield wall. They are facing the javelin throwers here. Ah, one of the guys got killed there. The swarm runners can also fight in melee. They have these melee weapons. Melee, so they are about as good as some of the others in melee. Archers over there. Kill a lot of Murlocs in this episode. I kind of want to replay everything I did in these two first episodes. So we are at the same location when I end the episode here. Slaughtering the murloc fish like people. They were probably the first models that banned Chief and the modeler, the main modeler, he did, did all the good looking models of the game. Didn't create the models, he rigged them for the game. Uh, another guy, Egon Wolfkin, he, he made a work of three models and the humans. Uh, so, uh, I believe that banned the, the first ones he did was the Murlocs and the Naga faction. Then he did the, the Frack Trolls and then the Dark Iron Dwarves. So the Murlocs were the first ones that he rigged. And back then, in I believe uh, April or May 2017, I believe that uh, Jürgen Wolfkin had already done the humans and the, the older scourge units and the, the old horde orc units and some older trolls and elves and dwarves that are no longer in use anymore. They are still using the orcs, he just remade them a little bit to be bigger and more epic looking, better gear and such. <coughs> the humans are the same. He, he did the humans two times. I believe he did the uh, original humans. They are no longer in use. There are a few officers like that. That, that look like them. And then I believe the new humans, the ones that are currently in use, they were a mix between, I believe, a model that... I believe he used two models that Bant had made, created from scratch, and then made an entire roster for Lorder and Terramore and Stormwind out of them. And then we got... Scarlet Crusade and Stormguard made by the user that used the Avatar Warcraft Hero. So one human roster, uh, two human units uh, resulted in five rosters. And after that we have added more units of course. Like elites and such. Okay. So the Murlocs are numerous but they are really bad. Well, we kill 49%, we lost 29% our army. Many of it lost 112, 108. We lost a few of the Knight of the Archers too. Are they firing? No, they are not. We want them to fire. enemy. 17 warriors there, 34. It's time to leave, uh, send in Shadow Glen Guardians as we are um, almost out of infantry. We really need the uh, archers, the knight of archers to aid by shooting at the enemy. Yeah, 
now they are firing. Don't know why they were previously. Probably because the Yavli introvers are killed. You don't need them to be in real hole anymore. So you can't zoom in on the night elven archers because the camera would zoom in on their projectile when they fire. You can only zoom in on them when they march and stand still, not when they fire their bows. Need to zoom in on cavalry or infantry. Almost all, 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 the, inf all the infantry are dead now. There are too few of them in the battle. The archers will probably be able to kill the Murlocs on their own. The By the way, the each Murloc unit has a Nagasivich officer. So they are still led by Nagasiviches. They are independent from the Naga faction. Making them fight the Naga in preparation for the Naga invasion later. Probably lose all the Night Elven warriors here. They were simply too few to win. Didn't really like the models anyway. It's fine if you lose them. I believe you can upgrade them too so they change looks. They have a, a different look as well. They look more uniform, but they need to be upgraded using a blacksmith. That's true for the Spearman too. There are two alternate looks for the Swordsman and the Spearman, and for the Mounted Swordsman, I believe. Yeah, we are losing. We had too many numbers here. Shadow, Shadow Glen Guardians should show up soon. They are more like an elite unit, elite Spearman unit. They will probably do better, but they are just one unit. We'll see how they will fare against these guys. Our archers will kill them from afar too. They lost 35%, they lost 83%. I think, I think we will win the battle. Thanks to the range units. We lose this unit and the other one. I don't like using cavalry in siege battles. Archers firing. No, they are not for some reason. Stop firing for some reason. They do not have any ammunition anymore. These guys do. They should continue to fire. But these guys would be wasted in melee. I think we'll wait on the Shadow Glen Guardians instead. They are on their way. These guys have a spearman, the night elves. They should be tougher. 125 of them. In our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, victory will be ours. Only good night elven infantry unit. This male. Don't want to waste the night elf archers. Night elven archers in melee. We can use them in another battle. It's range units, and they have full uh, full numbers. We will have to wait on the Shadow Glen Guardians to replace these guys. I believe the both units will run out of ammo. They won't be able to kill the Murlocs. Both units of Night Elven Archers, I mean. Very few Night, very few Night Elven warriors alive now. Killed 
van a llegar. No era lo que. Ya, 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 At least the warriors fight to the death. That's good. They're not heartless, they do not break. They are actually pretty good. For a basic unit. Maybe that will be changed later. I don't think that the knight should have unbreakable morale, but they seem to be fighting to death. There are a few units that fight to the death in this mod that shouldn't be doing it. That should be unique for the undead, I believe. I probably gave them unbreakable morale because I didn't like how they rotted when they had many troops left. It used to be of the opinion that all the units should fight to the death, even in high rule to the war. But I changed that back to how Undying Nephilim had wanted it. Not only the undead having unbreakable morale and certain elite groups and in this mod I feel like doing the same change. Uh, here we have David Naga Vixivich, Officer, the Murlocs. Only one guy remaining here, and one of the other unit, he died. Uh, two of the same unit, is there. There are two units over there, too. Uh, we are gonna die. He died. Uh, they were the same unit. Yeah, we lost the other unit. The two remaining of this one. And they died. It's over. Here are the Shadow Clan Guardians. They are now passing by the Knight of an Archers. They don't need to be in Shield Wall formation. That's why they took forever. They are slower when they move in Shield Wall. Past the Knight of an Archers. Only their arms look distorted because of the skeleton, otherwise they look great. Don't worry, we will handle the Murlocs. This is a good unit, tough unit, looks a little bit weird compared to every other unit in their army. Doesn't fit with the colors. And they killed, killed 89% and lost 37%. Right. The battle is in our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, victory. Yeah, the Murlocs here, they have shields too. Pikeman, Spearman vs. Spearman. They are far from as good as the Shadowland Guardians. Even though the Shadowland Guardians might be better suited to fight cavalry than to fight infantry, being Spearman. Uh, 
Fair Yanard was a Murloc, not a sea bitch. Oh, they have a go no, Fair Yanard is a Golok actually. The mage unit. But he can't fire anything. He's the only Golok in this army. I believe in Northern they have entire units, uh, bodyguard units of Golox and they are dangerous. They, they spit a mage beam. So they are really good. They are not a part of the Naga faction, you can't place them. Might add them as a unit for the Naga. They look cool and they are good too. The only virtual unit. They are not a part of the Naga that the Murlox are using. And I've been thinking about adding it to the Naga. From certain areas. That's why not. It's a cool unit. But it's a mage. Anyway. City. Yeah, they're almost dead now. They reached the goal. Look. Slightly glitched, probably, because it's the general model here. Yeah, doesn't fit well with the general model animation. We are blessed. He died. The enemy general is dead. Good. We have sent the idiot to the battle. Hell. Good job, soldiers. All of Christendom will be awed by the victory Remulus we took have this won area. today. All of Christus died. Using the same name as one of the generals of the mag. Okay. General Remulus. Night Elves. percent lost to nine percent there might be one unit somewhere if I missed They're still celebrating here hurry up uh, he had slow motion on clear victory Remulus of the night elves at 760 night elves lost 254 they have 506 remaining not the largest force kill 644 of the Murloc enemy Warlord Thristis of the Murlocs, or the Gorlock actually, he um, had 646 Murlocs, lost all of them, so the remaining they killed 273, so they were really bad. Here are the details. Night Elven Archers killed 620 of the enemy, Warriors killed 291, another unit of Fragilent Guardians killed 100. A unit of archers killed 357 and a unit of knight and warriors killed 185. So they killed a lot, especially one unit of knight and archers. Really effective. Killed over 600 units. Okay, we will exit back to the campaign map. We'll pause the recording here. Alright, the battle is over. Remulus took ruins of Matistra. The quest was to take that area. They finished the quest to mission success. He already been awarded with 2,500 florins. Okay, distance is futile. Ruins of Matistra and Marmarats, Remulus. Yeah. Okay, there are no buildings here. We will convert it, of course. Convert to a modern bailey. So it's no longer a uh, Naga area. We don't want that. They want it to be a Night Elven area. So, 
had also taken this area in the first episode. Then in the second episode we took this area and put a battle over here. But I think instead of fighting battle we'll take this area. Uh, so, but in this episode we want to take at least this area to... We'll fight this battle too against a similar army. Did we have more troops here? Yeah, we lost a few. We will lose the volunteers, the elven. Uh, we have fewer archers too. We might need to wait with attacking this area. We will not let them sally out. We will wait with that. Would have wanted to send the infant, but they can't reach the area this time. Send archers. We don't really need to send the rest. If we send the cavalry too, we won't let them be AI controlled. Now I think we can win. Yes. Have a 2 to 1 advantage. Allow this army to be controlled by the AI now. We will save the game here. And save for the battle. We want to fight this one too. Get the battle on the battle map. We we'll pause the recording here. This is a nice background with nine elves. Alright, the battle starts, start deployment. We have the general Brawl Beer Mantle here. He's a humanoid in, in battle. The beer on the map. His unit is unique. But he has a bodyguard of the normal Sentinel's bodyguard because they wanted him to be unique. But they didn't want him to have a brood bodyguard. So everyone look, would look like him. Okay, we'll here, the general can't uh, use the third person mode. Then I think we will we will um, pause the recording here. All right, I'm back. Hopefully the tool will work now. Yes, it works. Fury also seems very large. Okay, we can start the battle. So this is. Uh, no, this is not Malfurion. This is Roll Bear Mantle. Druid. It's pretty cool. Again, in his humanoid form. Here we have Bodyguard of Sentinel's Bodyguard, the normal Bodyguard of the Night Elves. Female Bodyguard. Lee bodyguard, elite infantry. We have the volunteers, the night elves. I thought they had a civilian animation, but they do not seem to move around. Weird. Maybe because they stand like that. Who knows? The volunteers are a mix between males and women. Then we have the swordsman. Settlement is the same as the other. Another ruin. Formerly held by the Naga in earlier versions of the mod. Now held by the Murloc rebels. We have the knight elven archers in the back. Spearman too. The first upgrade. I mean not upgrade, I believe they are not upgraded, so they have the worst look. The colored look. They look less uniformed. Okay. Oh 
Alright, we will move out of this view. Reinforcements, Captain Florander, the Night Elves, should up on the other side. Cavalry and some archers. We put the archers in loose formation. Then we'll order them to attack. The javeliners of this Moloch force, they have the same units as the other. The other archer units will also attack, of course. Then I think we can order the infantry to attack. They'll come from this side. We'll move this way. Attack there. Swordsman. Spearman. If we move these guys, will they start to move around? That's the question. Let's put normal speed on. Stop moving. I want to see if you can move around. No, they, they will hide, so they do not move around. Then they are not completely worthless in certain areas. Send in the volunteers too. I like that they have a mix between females and men. Look kinda cool. Two units of men. One, two. Two of females, two. You can up, have up to five different variations, I believe. You can see two different male versions. And uh, one uh, female with a ponytail, one with red hair, and one. I believe there was another one too. So three females and two males, I believe. I think we'll do both the first two episodes in one episode. So we'll fight some more battles against the Murlocs. This will be a longer episode be at least two hours, maybe three. Together the other two episodes were about two hours. This might end up three hours, we will see. Let's see four different variations of units here. Two, human, two males and two females. Don't know why the spearman has stopped. That's fine. But 